welcome to EduSpace, your career choice. My name is Logan Lawson, and you're watching the hottest educational show here in Mzanzi. Today, we're taking the show to new heights as we profile air traffic controlling. So the first thing that comes to mind when I think about air traffic controlling is traffic in the air. I mean, it's logical, right? But definitely not. If you're interested and you're wondering what it is, you better stay seated right there where you are. In the meantime, you can tweet us, it's away to TV channel. Don't forget to use that hashtag, EduSpace. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other careers you'd like us to cover. But for now, we're going to the streets to get our five quick facts. So, Masambeni. Kamalam ding pila ni nyolo. Kamalam muspa manda kwati. Kamalam mu pili ngo mate njwa. Kamalam mukani swa kwali. Kamalam mu siambo ngamu lifer. Tenzi grade twelve. Nyenzo grade ten. Fundu grade eleven. Grade eleven. Grade eleven. Funda la sleleke le high school. E sleleke le next one the stadium. Funda sleleke le secondary school. Sleleke le funda sleleke le senior secondary school. Air traffic control is a service provided to control airplanes from the ground and on air. Air traffic control is a service provided by grounded base air traffic controllers who direct aircrafts on the ground and through controlled airspace and can provide advisory services to aircrafts in non-controlled airspace. The primary purpose of ATC Worldwide is to prevent collisions, organize and expedite the flow of air traffic and provide information and other support for pilots. In some countries, ATC plays a security role or defensive role or is operated by the military. I think airport is going to Africa or the international airport because it's international level. It accommodates a bunch of people from outside countries. I base it South Africa and about departure from inside South Africa to outside countries. OR Tambo International Airport is located outside of Johannesburg in the country of South Africa. It is the busiest airport on the African continent. It is the primary airport for international and national travel within South Africa. The OR Tambo is one of only three airports in the world that offers flights to all of the continents except Antarctica. This airport serves as a hub for several airlines including South African Airways, Com Air, Mango, Airlink, and South African Express. It sits at an elevation of 5,558 feet above sea level and contains two runways that run north to south. I'm a aircraft controller's abalegi lega kulu uguti kuche kwenye speed as mnandenza itourism ya funda ngao. I'm a speed kio tse anjalo wazi wi direction api ya kona pizo fige la kona. Air traffic controllers have an extensive amount of education and experience that enables them to command the skies with confidence. An air traffic controller applies separation rules to the aircraft that they direct. Separation rules are used to regulate the distance between airlines and aircraft by requiring a minimum distance between them. This is to increase safety and reduce unnecessary risk for pilots and passengers. A traffic control tower is a tall window structure located on the airport grounds. A traffic control tower is a tall windowed structure located on the airport grounds. The primary method of controlling the immediate airport environment is visual observation from the airport control tower. Air traffic controllers are responsible for the separation and efficient movement of aircraft and vehicles operating on the taxiways and runways of the airport itself and the aircrafts in the air near the airport, generally 9 to 8 kilometers depending on the airport procedures. A black box is a small machine which is, uh, it calculates the accidents of the airplanes which are happening during the day and during the night, which is a major role of us to know the accidents which are happening in our society and in our airports and in our country. The black box is a small machine that records information about an aircraft during its flight, used to discover the cause of an accident. The black box is made up of two separate pieces of equipment, the flight data recorder and a cockpit voice recorder. They are compulsory on any commercial flight or corporate jet and are usually kept in the tail of an aircraft. While they do nothing to help the plane when it is in the air, both pieces of equipment are vitally important should the plane crash as the Yab Air Crash investigators find out what happened just before the crash. Now that we have our five quick facts, let's go speak to our lecturer and learn a little bit more about air traffic control. I'm excited, I hope you are too. So come with me. 
the ATNS Aviation Training Academy is a unique organization in terms of the training on offer. They provide air traffic services and engineering training to their staff members. And they also provide a wide range of aviation related courses throughout the continent and into the Middle East. It is their vision to be a major contributing partner towards ensuring aviation safety in Africa through their training efforts. Mr. Granard, welcome to Edu Space and thank you so much for having us over. Thank you very much. What is an air traffic controller? An air traffic controller is someone who has been highly trained and licensed to control aircraft and vehicles on the ground at an airport or anything that is moving at an airport. He is the one who does all those, all those things, but he has to be trained, highly trained, and then licensed. What subjects do you need to have studied in high school that would assist in you getting into a course like this? Mainly we would do, like him to have strong um, results on mathematics, science subjects, and at least uh, he has to be good in English. Over and above the subjects you have studied, what characteristics should one have in order to be accepted in a field like this? We have again to look into somebody who has got a high IQ so that he's able to think on his own uh, more than most of the people. I would say somebody who is uh, able to go beyond a certain limit. That is the student, somebody who wants to see because of the following. It might be two aircraft are coming to, about to collide. Such a thing has never ever happened. It is happening only on this particular student. He has never been taught, but he has to make sure that the two aircraft do not collide. Then he has to use not only what he learned at school, but his common sense. So we are looking at those people with high common sense, the one that is able to think beyond most of the people. Now, if your marks don't reach the requirements, can you do a bridging course? I would say no, we cannot give him a bridging course because we want on the first hand he should be able to do it right. There are a lot of uh, departments within the system that we can put him in. If at all we see that he has done well to a certain level, but not to that of a controller, then we can not push him, but uh, we can assign him other duties within the system. What does the syllabus consist of? The syllabus starts with um, core content, which is the basic course. This one, will take him into 16 subjects. One has to pass on each and every subject. And then the passing mark is 70% or more. If he has to fail on any of those subjects, it should not be below 50%. So failing is between 50 to 69. But anything above 69, which is 70 to 100, that is what we, we are looking at. Is the course more theory or practical based? I would say both. Because if we dwell too much on the practical side, without him not knowing why he is doing it, it's also dangerous. He has to know both theory and practical. So I would say on equal terms, he has to know both. Because if he fails the theory, he cannot start the practical side who block him somewhere to say, no, start, finish this subject before we continue. How long does it take to be a qualified air traffic controller? Here we are talking of, um, um, first of all, somebody has to be more than 18 years of age to start the core content itself. Then uh, on average, would we'll say three years. When students are done with their studies, do they go into the working world where they direct live traffic or do they further their training at an airport? When they finish the course in the simulators and the classrooms, we give them certificates that you have finished the course. Here is your certificate. When they go to the field, they will check on the certificate that he passed. Then 
there will be another controller who is qualified, we call it as on-job training instructor, who will be now with, who will be paired with that particular student. Then it will take about 200 hours in terms of South Africa and other countries, 250 hours, 300 hours. Thereafter, there will be a panel of people, including CA, Civil Aviation Authority, which will come and then examine him practically and theory questions for him now to satisfy that he can as well uh, carry on as an air traffic controller. When he passes that one, then Civil Aviation Authority will give him now a license. There are two things now what is happening there. He will have a license and then a certificate. A certificate is his own property, but the license is a, it's a license for the government. The government has got the authority to withdraw it if he, he messes up. Let's imagine you are working and there was an incident. Air two aircraft were about to collide then immediately the license has to be withdrawn. They have to investigate. If they find that you have got a, a fault, they will send you back to, to school to redo again the whole thing, then go back to the field and being tested by the same panel. When they are satisfied, then they will give you back your license. My last and final question to you, sir, is how much are the fees per year and can students apply for financial aid in bursaries? We have seen students coming from their own pockets, paying for the course, but uh, with my 40 year experience, I don't encourage such a thing, though it has happened here, uh, but such things are not encouraged because we might receive a student who is not capable to do the course. Then at the end, whether it was the father who sponsored him, uh, definitely he will lose the money, we won't pay back the money because he paid for the course and then he has failed. But what we have, an established uh, program that we have here in South Africa and in all over the countries is that they undergo an interview, which is a very comprehensive one, to pick now the right students to come for the course. So those ones who came on their own, 99.9% .9 have failed. So I would recommend that they have to undergo that intensive interview for them to come and carry the uh, course. Well, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us over. No, thank you very much. Mr. Chico definitely gave us all the information that we needed. That was our lecture, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you feel inspired. Right now, we're taking a quick commercial ad break. So stay seated, stay there where you are, because this is EduSpace, your career choice. Welcome back to EduSpace, your career choice. It is now time for us to sit down with our student of the day, someone whose career is about to fly away. So come with me. As an international transport association, regional training provider, the ATNS ATA was awarded IATA's world top regional training partner for several years running. Billy, oh, hey, how are you doing? How's it looking? I'm well, thank you, Nassau. I'm fine. Well, well, thanks, man. All right. Thanks. Um, we can just grab a chair, yeah? yeah thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, man. All right. Well, Billy, welcome to Edge Space, and thank you so much for having us. Oh, yeah, welcome, yeah, welcome, guys. Now, air traffic control is not a popular career choice. How did you find out about it? Okay. Uh, with me, um, it's kind of a different story, because um, by then, I had already obtained my diploma. So um, I was looking for a bursary, so it was going to sponsor me for my next qualification, of which is the BTEC. So I was just going through internet looking for something like that. And um, I came across with an advertisement uh, from ATNS. It looked very colorful. It was something different, something that I've never seen before. So I was like, okay, this has something to do with aircraft. Uh, it has something to do with aeronautical. So I just said, okay, let me just apply for this. I'll see if um, I'm still going to be able to branch out back to my career afterwards. Um, yeah, then I applied. Uh, they called me for um, personality tests. I went there, I wrote those tests. They called me again for psychometric tests. I went there as well and I passed. 
Um, yeah, then finally they called me for verbal interviews. I passed those as well. Then, yeah, they called me uh, yeah, to, to come uh, for this opportunity. How did you decide to study air traffic control opposed to anything else? Yeah, I wouldn't say that I had a plan for AIDS before because I did not know anything about it. Uh, it's something that is, we are not familiar with in the townships where I'm coming from. Um, even people in rural areas as well we are not familiar with such things. But then again, when I started familiarizing myself with um, the career itself, going through internet, I saw that this is something that is different and it's great, I have to try it. So what does your training consist of? It's about 25 weeks or so, it's six months actually. Um, now we are in our second month. The first month is just for introduction. They, check, they take you through um, other airports, aerodromes, just to see the layout of what's happening and through towers and whatnot. Then um, the second month, that's where you start uh, the real theory parts of things. Uh, yeah, it consists of around 15 modules. Um, so it's not a lot of time. So sometimes you have to write your exams on Friday and on Tuesday is another exam. Then they'll give you some time to study again. Maybe on another Tuesday, you, you write another exam. So that will go through up until um, the sixth month. Uh, then after that, you go home and you have that 10 days holiday, holidays, and then you come back for rating. And during rating, it's more like a practical part of it. Um, yeah, after you pass that rating, uh, you will be sent in one of the aerodromes around the country. Now, were you ever put in a position where you have to act fast and think on your feet? Uh, definitely. As an air traffic controller, you will have to think fast because you, when you get in position, you wear a headset. And in these headsets, on your left, you are on frequency talking to one of the pilots in air. Maybe on, on, your, on, your, on your right side, you are talking to someone who's still, who is still maybe on, on the ground or someone who's still flying. But so, in some other place. So we are talking to people, two people at the same time. You just have to tell the other person to stand by a bit while you are talking to one another one and that other one to tell them to stand by at some point and talk to the next person. So yeah, definitely you'll have to think on your feet. Now, getting into a simulator for the first time, was it intimidating for you? We haven't done a lot of simulators. We just saw them and obviously through videos. We've seen people working on simulators. We haven't, we haven't really um, started with simulators. You do the simulators patch when you uh, come back for the next course, which is aerodrome course. Now, Melis, what has been your most exciting assignment? We, we haven't started yet, but I know for a fact that there is an assignment where you have to build an aerodrome in airports. We have to uh, build a layout actually, of, uh, of an uh, airport. That is a, ve a very exciting part because now, during our visits to these aerodromes, we had to see different layouts of aerodromes, different kind of runways. We had to see parallel runways, uh, cross uh, runways. So yeah, during that assignment, you just have to simulate whatever you saw during your, during your visits to different airports and try and build um, that uh, um, uh, aerodrome. So that's very exciting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to that assignment. And what has been your most difficult assignment and how did you overcome that? And not yet, I haven't seen any difficult one. As I said, because we, we haven't started with, it, with the theory, but in the past few weeks, we've, we have done some um, aviation English. So I was not familiar with most of the ways of uh, you, you, we use in uh, aviation. So, but it was not that challenging. Just that you have to now um, juggle around how you speak uh, from a normal uh, uh, civil uh, person to an aviation person. Have you ever been in a real traffic control tower? Um, yes, uh, I've been there, and it's it's very exciting because you get to see aircraft taxiing uh, in the runways, different aircrafts, and others are coming to land, some, some more of the aircrafts uh, are departing. So it's a very exciting view, uh, looking from the top, looking everything going, uh, going uh, ha happening down there. Melissa, my last and final question to you is, where do you see yourself after you have obtained your qualification? Um, I see myself uh, 
going through up the ranks uh, from being an ADCO, being an, an assistant being, uh, to be an uh, ADCO 1 up until I qualified as a, an air traffic controller, um, the third course, which is an, an ADCO 3. Well, yeah, that is the, the last um, rank that we have here. Yeah, so I see myself in two or three years being an ADCO 3. Well, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us over. Thanks, thanks a lot, my guys. Uh, yeah. As an air traffic controller, you definitely need more than just good marks. You definitely need to be naturally intelligent. And that's exactly our student. While we're taking a quick commercial ad break, we'll be back with more Edge Space, your career choice. Welcome back to Edge Space, your career choice. It is now time for us to sit down with our professional of the day who has years of experience in air traffic controlling. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty excited, so come with me. Ubakeng joined air traffic and navigation services in 2001 on bursary scheme to become an air traffic controller. A year later, he then moved to Cape Town International Airport as qualified air traffic assistant. Ubakeng, welcome to Edge Space and thank you so much for having us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Just to jump straight into this, uh, my first question to you is, what is the importance of an air traffic controller in society? Well, air travel has been proven to be a safe mode of travel, and there's a larger demand for people to travel by air. And for that reason, the more aircraft you have in the sky, the more air traffic controllers you're gonna need to ensure that uh, everyone travels safely from departure to their destination points. Why did you choose to become an air traffic controller? It was a very odd and strange thing. It just happened in January when I was ready to go to university and I saw the advert for, from ATNS. And when I applied and I learned more about air traffic control, it just seemed like a very fascinating industry to be in and I'm happy that I chose this route. What does a day in the life of an air traffic controller look like knowing that there's thousands of people's lives depending on your decision making? Well, we work shifts because as you can imagine, people are constantly traveling. And where I work in Oar Chambo, we typically work from 6 in the morning to about 1 o'clock or in the afternoon shift from about 1 o'clock until 7.30. The night shift is 7.30 to the next morning at 6. And during the shift, we do get breaks in between. Because as you can imagine, you cannot sit for those long hours with that intensity of concentration. I can imagine you cannot come to work stressed or preoccupied on this kind of job. Do you stay at home in a situation like that? Well, the employer does allow for you to stay at home. Either you can take a sick day or be on leave. And it, of course, it's not advisable for you to be at work if you're not in the right frame of mind. Now, there's a lot of activity happening on the runway. Do you only direct airplanes or do you direct planes, people and cars? I speak to airplanes once they're already in the sky. But for the tower controllers, every movement on the runways and on the taxiways, which can be cars and airplanes, the, the, the tower controller in charge will be responsible for making sure that they clear of one another. Do you direct both international and domestic flights, or is it someone designated to direct or control domestic and another for international flights? Well, as air traffic controllers with your particular discipline, you've got a specific or rather an assigned airspace to, your, to you. So each and every aircraft can be both domestic and international that flies in your airspace. Rather, you are responsible for them. So you speak to both if they're in your airspace. Can you freely work at a different airport or do you need to go for specific training in order to work there? Well, for each and every airport that you work in or each and every airspace you work in, you will have to validate that, spe that specific uh, airspace. So each and every time you go to a different station, you have to go through training to validate that, that particular unit. What has been the most rewarding aspect of your career? Well, being an air traffic controller in Oar Tambo during the 2010 World Cup and being in the industry alone, the, all the air events I've been to, those are always awesome to see. How often do you have an incident when air traffic controller caused an accident? Yes, South African air traffic controllers have been very good. That there's never been an air traffic control related aircraft accident in South Africa. But internationally, there are incidents that do happen, and they're random and they happen, they're not often, but they do happen. Is there great demand for air traffic controllers in South Africa? Yes, most definitely, because like I said in the beginning, air travel is, is rising. So for the virtue of more airplanes being in the sky, there is always going to be a, a need for more air traffic controllers. My last and final question to you is, what is the earning potential for an air traffic controller? <laughs> Look, it's uh, financially it is rewarding. I can say that. 
Esther Mitnyana. Very difficult to say. <laughs> well, it was lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. What a perfect landing to a perfect show. Man, I had so much fun today learning about air traffic control. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did, but not just that. You should have learned just as much as I did. Man, it is the end of another spectacular episode, but you can still interact with us on our social media platforms by tweeting us at Soweto TV channel. And don't forget to use that hashtag, Edgy Space. Share with us your thoughts and your views and what other careers you'd like us to cover. From me and the team, it is bye-bye for now. Until next week, Monday, same time, same place. This is, of course, Edgy Space, your career choice.